Hi guys and welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make a wonderful dinner roll that's absolutely perfect for hamburgers or as I'm going to be making a fillet of fish and you can see that uh, video on my channel. Now the secret to making great bread, and I make a lot of bread in Steve's Kitchen, is wonderful flour. Now if you've got a nice strong flour with a high protein content, which needs to be at least 12 to 14 percent, you'll find that your structure of your bread will rise nicely. If you're finding your bread is dropping and it's not really holding its structure, Try a different flour. Look for a good quality flour. Now to me, one of the most important things when you're making bread is to weigh your flour. Don't use cups, guys. The difference between one cup and the next can be so different, it's not a great way to make bread. If you compact it in, it can be very heavy. If it's loosely packed, it can be up to sort of 20-30% different. So I'm going for 500 grams, just look at the scales down here, 500 grams of strong flour, which is the equivalent of a pound. Now to the flour, I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of salt, that's about 10 grams. Now here it's going to get a bit controversial, guys. I'm using um, dried instant yeast, and I'm going to put two teaspoons of dried instant yeast on the opposite side to the salt because the salt will destroy the yeast so it's important to keep them separate. And what's controversial? Well I'm going to add milk and water, 150 mils of water and 150 mils of milk, I just pop those together like that. Cold milk and cold water, it doesn't need to be warm guys, it's a complete fallacy when people talk about having to use warm water to activate the yeast. Yeast is a living organism and actually you make better bread when you don't put warm water in there because it, it naturally rises slower and gives you much better structure. So I'll pop that in. It's this point where people put their hands in and get themselves looking like the cookie monster. What's the point? Take a fork and just mix that through to sort of bind the liquid into the flour. And there you have already a much easier to handle flour liquid mix and you can just scoop that off the fork and then get your hands in there and it keeps your hands a lot cleaner. We're just going to pull that together now until it pulls away from the bowl. Now with this ratio I found it pretty much perfect. You may have to adjust the balance of water tiny tiny amounts but I find 300 mils to 500 grams or a pound of flour works perfect every time. So you can see after just a few seconds that the dough is coming together and all the loose flour is coming away from the bowl. Now at this point you can decide, you can have this in a bowl mixer and you can knead it away for 10 minutes, but I'm going to tell you why you should do it by hand. We're just going to turn this out onto the surface. This is a fantastic workout for the arms, particularly for the underarms there, I think uh, they call them chicken wings. It's a great way of just working the dough and getting a little bit of a workout. It doesn't take long, it's a little bit of fun. Do it by machine by all means. But right now, the dough is all crumbly and loose like that. And we're just going to be pushing it down, kneading it, folding it with the back of our hands. And 10 minutes, set a little timer guys, and just work this dough for 10 minutes and you'll get this wonderful silky dough. Now guys, you can skip ahead, just click that button there, skip ahead to the um, the final part, but if you want to hear me natter on a little bit, I'm happy for you to stay with me while I knead this dough. Now, homemade bread, you just can't beat it. And as I said to you, it, it is all in the flour. I was buying for a quite some time a flour from a uh, delicatessen that was a, a Greek flour and it was a good quality flour, but the breads just weren't rising. And um, although the protein level was 11.5%, just wasn't getting the structure and they kept collapsing. So I changed my flour um, and straight away I started getting much, much better results. And you really do want to look in your area uh, for a good quality bread flour. As you work this like this now, you'll see a smoothness. I just, I mess, sometimes I, I just roll it like this and pull it out. I also like to sort of slam it down and stretch it. 10 minutes of fun guys, just enjoy yourself, listen to the radio, put a little bit of Steve's Kitchen on. And we are just, you can see I've had no extra water to this, no extra liquids at all, and this dough is perfect. 
You will find from region to region that different temperatures and humidity might make a little difference, so you might have to modify your mix slightly. But um, as I say, this works for me. There are so many different bread recipes you can do. You could take a bread like this and just roll it up, make a nice bloomer out of it, let it rise, cut it across. You can add pine nuts to the top or sunflower seeds. This makes great rolls, it also makes a great loaf. If I was making a loaf, I probably wouldn't put um, the milk in with it. But I might add a little bit of oil. So just continue to knead to stretch out the dough, roll it back, fold it, stretch it out the other way. This is a fantastic workout. It really is good for you if you do this daily or every other day. I'll tell you something, guys. I've calculated the cost of a loaf, including oven baking times. And um, I can make a loaf with this flour. I buy 10 kilo bags at a time. I can make a loaf of bread, really high quality bread, for about 79 cents. Now, you cannot buy a loaf of bread in the supermarkets for 79 cents where I am. And that would be then, the even if it was a dollar, it would be the cheapest, horrible processed bread. And if it was a bread like this, it would probably be five, six dollars. So really, if you eat bread, making your own is the economic way to go. Not only do you know what's in your bread, you get very good quality bread, you can play and experiment. You know, you can take the, the dough and tie it into knots and make little knot rolls. There are so many things. I hope I'm not boring you. If I am, <laughs> you should have skipped ahead. I think I'll leave that button up there so you can click if, you, if you've had enough of listening to me ramble on. You see how that's starting to become lovely and silky now? I'm just working and working, stretching the, stretching the gluten out. Now I know a lot of you guys that are gluten intolerant miss this and I must admit I feel very, very privileged that I can eat gluten. I am actually making a gluten free version of these rolls as well though guys. So if you haven't seen that get across to the channel. We make so many different types of bread as well with similar mixtures to this. You can make pumpernickel bread, you can make French sticks. I'll actually do a video for French sticks, that might be quite good. Show you guys how to make a French stick without the uh, special tins. So what are we now? Three minutes left to go. And I can feel the smoothness coming into this dough now. I can feel the surface starting to get a nice elasticity to it. You really want to put your weight behind this, guys, and I've got enough of that. Put your weight and stretch that dough out, fold it back, turn it, stretch it out. You're sort of stretching the gluten out, folding it over, turn, stretch, fold, turn, stretch, fold. And then, as I say, you can just sort of roll it into a sausage dog like that, and then just stretch the glutens. Now, by using the yeast with cold water, we're actually gonna get a lovely slow stretch. It'll take a couple of hours. We're gonna get a lovely development of the gluten in the bread. Like I say, girls, this is good for the arms, good for those uh, anterior, or oh, what is that muscle called, I forget, triceps. Could Angel tell me if she's watching? The triceps, isn't it, Ange? You need never go to the gym again, guys. Just make bread. If you make five or six loaves, you can do some weightlifting with it. And that beeper's telling me it's time to stop kneading. You can go on a little bit longer, guys, but I've got a lovely silky dough now. There's none of that crumbliness in there. I'm going to add a, a tablespoon or so of oil to the bottom of the bowl here. <coughs> Just pop the dough in there, face down, and then turn it over. That coats the dough. 
We just take some uh, cling wrap, pop that over the top, cellophane wrap, whatever you guys call it, seal it. We don't want any any gaps around that because we want to keep the moisture inside the bread. Now, the best way I found to rise this, I've got a very low setting on my oven, it's about 50 degrees. I turn it on for five minutes and then turn it off. That makes the inside of the oven nice and warm. Uh, I leave the light on in there, pop this bowl in, hour and a half, two hours, it will have at least double in size. So my dough has been in for a couple of hours, just over a couple of hours actually, and it's easily doubled in size. So I'll just take off the wrapping. You can see that it's lovely and springy. You can see the elastic there, the stretch of the gluten that's built up. Now I want to knock that back down now and just bring that out onto a wooden surface. Now I use a wooden surface because I don't want the cold surface of my countertop because I want to retain the heat in there. And I'm just gonna fold this over push the air out of this dough. It's a lovely glossy elastic and if you push your finger in there, it springs back perfectly. It's absolutely gorgeous, guys. Now I'm just gonna divide my dough up into to eight pieces. I'm gonna make eight rolls out of this. So we take each piece of dough like this and we just take a, a cupped hand, like a little spider, and we're just gently rounding a little bit of pressure on there. And when you lift that up, you get this wonderful plump round roll here. I'm just gonna lay those on my tray, a little bit of space around them. Now it's quite easy just to take two like that and just roll them around, get your little balls like this and pop them down on the tray. Now you can pop the rolls into a, into a plastic bag like this, pull the top up so it seals in the moisture. And we're gonna leave that in a warm area now for a good hour to allow those rolls to expand beautifully. This is a big part of the cooking of the rolls. I mean, uh, part of the baking process is letting them rise to get all the air inside there before you bake them. So my rolls there now have doubled in size. They've been about an hour and a quarter and they've proved nicely. Now preheat an oven to 220 degrees Celsius, that's about 435 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna pop these in now for about 15 minutes. I keep an eye on them. I want them to rise a little bit and get nice golden brown on top. So. Let's get them in. Okay, there are my dinner rolls. You've seen they've puffed up beautifully. Oh, this tray is a bit hot. And because the crust, I want the crust to be firm, you can see. It's nice and firm like that, but I also want it to be a little soft, so I'm just gonna brush the surface of these lightly with a bit of butter, a bit of melted butter. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave these now to cool down and the butter will absorb into there. And I'm gonna be using these dinner rolls for a filet of fish, a McDonald's filet of fish that I'm doing for uh, one of my subscribers. So, still pretty piping hot. So join me then. Thanks for joining me for baking these rolls today, guys. Um, I'll put a link for my channel above there, subscribe, and a couple of links on the side for some videos. Uh, if you want more baking and bread videos, give me some comments down below. There is a, a few baking videos on the channel, including the gluten-free rolls. See you next time, be good.